live for the Milk Ford Talk Studio. Boomer Esiason, Greg Giannotti, it's Boomer and Geo on the fans. Simulcast across the country on CBS Sports Network. And wherever you are, the free Odyssey app. Good Friday morning, a feel-good football Friday, a feel-good Yankees Friday as they move on. Beating the Kansas City Royals in the ALDS. Garrett Cole showed up, earned that contract, earned that title of being ace. Aaron Judge starting to really come out of it now. No home runs, but he blasted that ball into the gap between left and center. Earned a couple of walks up there as well. So he is getting closer, and this was just a stepping stone. It was almost like a warm-up series for the New York Yankees. No disrespect to the Royals, but sort of what it was. A little bit of a warm-up series for the Yankees, and now... They await the winner of the Guardians and Tigers. And here we are. Both the Mets and the Yankees are awaiting their opponents in their respective league championship series. And we are closer to a Subway series than we have ever been since. Do not say it. No, no, this is just a fact. We're closer to it. Don't say it. Why? I said that the Mets weren't going to go back to Philadelphia, and they didn't. I said I expect them to win. They did. All I'm stating is a fact here. We are closer to a Subway Series as we sit here today than we have been in 24 years. The last time both these teams were in the ALCS and NLCS was 2000, and they both ended up in the World Series. That's a fact. That's not touching money. That's just a fact. Good morning, Boo. How are you? Uh, Good morning, G. I'm great. It is Feel Good Football Friday, and uh, yeah, we got two baseball teams moving on to their respective championship series, and last night was a Garrett Cole night. It was... uh, that was the guy that you paid all that money for. That was the performance that you needed. You basically shut them down. Yankee scratch, you know, and claw for three runs. Wasn't really much to speak of. It was kind of a boring game. But uh, it was a boring the, series. All well, a boring around, series, yeah. yes. Yeah. I mean, especially compared to what the Mets were going through. But I will say that, uh, you know, he came up big when you needed him to come up big. And then, of course, this Yankee bullpen, uh, who, I don't know, people have been screaming and yelling about it, I feel like, since uh, the middle of June. Uh, did well, not exactly, anymore. I know, yeah. but it did exactly what it had been doing towards the end of the season, and that basically is lock, locked down central. And, uh, you know, you're talking about uh, a team that, in, in my eyes, I know that they're not, you know, moving runners along and getting the key bases and crap like that, and everybody wants home runs. But, you know, they do have the easiest path to the World Series. I don't care what anybody says. They are built to win now. Um, all of this stuff, getting rid of, you know, Aaron Boone and – Brian Cashman in the middle of August, you know, looks asinine now uh, simply because this team uh, may have a flaw or two. Every team has a flaw or two, uh, but they are right where they're supposed to be, where they're expected to be, and they're going to the ALCS, and there are going to be expectations that they go to the World Series. There's going to be expectations that they win the World Series. So they have lived up, it may not be the most pretty uh, situation and and maybe because certain guys aren't carrying their weight at the moment, but still they're right exactly where they should be. Yeah, and this is the best part about it. They didn't play their best baseball and they won in four games and they're moving on and you're starting to see Aaron Judge make strides to get out of this horrific postseason malaise that he's been in. So they're rounding into shape at the best time. So, yeah, I mean, and, and the one of my favorite phrases ever is expectation is the thief of joy. And I think that you're seeing that with the New York Yankees and the opposite with the New York Mets. I mean, having no expectations really is a catalyst for all the joy we're having and also the uh, unbelievable finishes to these games and how dramatic they have been. But this was a take care of business type of series. It was I, That's why we were joking around about the tipping point. If they had somehow lost this series, then the organization was going to have to go in a different direction, and they did not. So we are now past the tipping point. I believe so, yes. I, I mean, now, if they end up getting swept by either the Tigers or the Guardians, then I think we're back at a tipping point. Okay. But I don't think that that's going to happen. All right, so, Al, you can remove the tipping point uh a, we might a, put it back on, though. A reference uh, for in regards to the Yankees. No, no, no. Uh, however, don't, it's still there for the Jets. Don't, don't remove it yet. No. I said if they get, there's still a tipping point possibility well, well, for the Yankees. There could be a new tipping point. The, the, the old tipping point is over with now. Okay. All right. What I'm saying is that the tipping point that you felt as the Yankees you know, were going to Kansas City 1-1, mm-hmm. that was the tipping point spot. Well, yes. that tipping point spot has now been handled. It has been. 
So we we re, we remove that part of the tipping point. It's sort of like a press. So we're closing that press and we're opening up a new one. Sort of like sort of like that. It kind of like that, but we're not really opening a new one just yet because I I you know the Yankees are where they're supposed to be. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have to see how this next series goes with them. Yeah, like you said, if they lose this next series, we could then be at another tipping point. Yeah. Yeah, we could be. So, but we're right now. We're, we're what we're doing is with Yankee fans this morning. We're celebrating the fact that they are where they're supposed to be, even though it probably isn't like the way the Yankee fan wants it. Well, I think that last night changed it a little bit because th- this was a game that that you needed to see Garrett Cole be great. You needed to see Aaron Judge do something. You got both of those things. So, I, and I, I, and you wanted to a, a little. It got a little dicey, obviously, with that ball that goes to the warning track, um, and Juan Soto has got his back up against the wall. But, I mean, it was relatively, other than that sort of like <gasps> moment for two seconds, you know, it was a relatively uh, easy game. Hey, the, go about your business. The, the Yankees take a care of business. And I, at least from, you know, my perspective with the friends that are Yankee fans, it seemed like they were, they were starting to wake up a little bit. Like la- last night was a little bit of a smelling salt for them. They're not totally there yet. They're not totally like... Yankee, like I'm going to get my pinstripe jersey on with no undershirt and put my chain out and then give middle fingers to every Met fan that I know. Uh, They're not quite there yet, but they're starting to get a little bit of that smelling salt, and they should because, I mean, realistically, I'm sorry, but I'm going to feel just like you are about the ALCS, just like I felt about the ALDS, which is they got to win. If it's the Tigers or the Guardians, yeah. they gotta win. ALDS, ALC, I got it. Yeah, got it. yeah, yeah. Right. I know, but like, no longer a tipping point at this point. Uh, not right now. No, but there's there's a, there's a level of expectation. They have lived up to it. It hasn't been pretty all year long. I think they have their bullpen right where they want them now. They have their starting pitching right where they want them now. Uh, maybe judges last night. Maybe uh, he's starting to come around now. All of a sudden, Stanton got another RBI. Uh, I think that there are a lot of things to really, really uh, feel good about your team with, even though, like I said, every team has a flaw somewhere. Yeah, of course. You want to say it's the bottom of your lineup. You want to say it's the guy, uh, it's Wells behind Judge. Whatever Whatever you think your team's flaws are, you know, we all know what our team's flaws are. Just, just enjoy the run. Enjoy where they are because nothing is going to be perfect. And anything worth anything means you got to work hard to go get it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's it's not it's not meant to be easy. There's only be a, been a few teams. I mean, can it get any easier for the Yankees though? Um, Honestly, th- this year, no. Uh, as far as the opponents, no. I mean, it was it was it was sort of easy for the 1998 Yankees, one of the best teams we've ever seen. But generally, it's not easy in the baseball postseason. I think with the Yankees, they they can't have two things working concurrently, which is not good starting pitching from guys like Schmidt, Rodon, and Heal, let's say, and the offense not stepping up and having some of those, you know, disappearing games. You can't have those two things working at the same time because then that's how you kill the Yankees is they throw out a a C plus B minus pitcher who gives up four runs and then the offense goes quiet. That's how the Yankees lose in the postseason. You can you can compensate for the lack of dominant starting pitching with a dominant offense, and you can also maybe if the offense goes quiet, you get some great starts out of guys like Rodon, hopefully you know Schmidt and the others outside of Garrett Cole. But that, if the Yankees are going to lose, that's going to that's going to be the way they're going to lose. And if they win the World Series, then. One of those things has to pick up the other. Yeah, I and and that you could say the same thing about every team. Not it's the you same know, not, thing. I know it's not the Yankees. Not necessarily but, though, because there's I mean, certain guys like there's because after Cole, there's nobody you feel great about. Yeah, well, this is this is where the offense has got to step but, up. All right, but and this is where the bullpen has got to step in. But not, but not every team is that way. Yeah, but this team is. Right, but you just said every team's that way. So I'm saying that well, they're not saying every this team's is that their way. flaw. Yeah, and so um, so every team has a flaw. Every team, every team certainly has a flaw. I, I, yes. I think every Met fan sits on the edge of their couch. They're they're standing when Edwin Diaz comes in the game. Yeah, and by the way, we are giving away ALCS tickets for oh, Game One uh, this hour. Our first pair will be this hour. 
And then we'll give away another pair in the 8 a.m. hour. So we'll explain to you how you win those tickets coming up. But stay tuned throughout uh, this hour. We're going to do it the same way that we were doing it or no? Sure. We can even drop the clue before we go to this first break if you wish. Okay. So we'll do that. So hang around before the first break and I'll... uh, I'll have uh, Eddie play that clip, and then that'll that'll uh, give you an idea of when to be listening a little bit later, win those ALCS tickets. So we are here for you this morning, Yankees fans, giving away tickets to game one of the ALCS, which will be Monday night at Yankee Stadium at 7.37. Right, ag- right up against the Jack game. Uh, yes, but you'll get a little bit of a uh, little bit of Yankee baseball before and they I, kick off that game. And I think the Mets are right up against the Giants. Yeah, 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 they are. So hey, I mean, if think think about that Monday though. On Monday, you'll have the Mets at four. You'll have Monday. Wait, no, no, no. Sunday. No Monday. Monday yeah, but game two, right? Yeah, game two. Oh, game two. Okay. Monday, you'll have the Mets at four. You'll have the Yankees at eight. 05 or 808 or whatever. And then you'll have the Jets and the Bills at 815. I mean, come on. Come on. Two, and, and the day before that. Well, it's not as good as, as the Monday. Yeah, but, 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 yes. but if you put the if you put the 24 hours together. Yeah. Maybe 36 hours together. That's the, the most I mean, you, have, you have you have five sports teams playing games. Or five five scheduled games for right. four sports teams. That's right. That all are playing for something. That all means something. Obviously, the baseball bigger because of the postseason and league championship series and all of that. But, you know, the Giants are playing for something. And obviously, the Jets are playing for first place. So, you can make a case that these two days coming up, Sunday and Monday, is jam-packed as it's been in New York sports in a very long time. So, yeah, this is it, man. This is this is it. And, you know, I was, I was thinking back. I was like, man, you know, because it's been a long time. And I remember... I remember 2000, I was, you know, I had just graduated high school. It was my first uh, semester in college, and it was the it was the Subway Series. I remember watching the League Championship Series, the Yankees against the Mariners and the Mets against the Cardinals. And this is like listening to Bob Costas. And then, and then you think now, it's like, it's like man, because I had that feeling like it can't, it can't be the Cardinals and the Mariners, right? Yeah. It can't be, it can't be the the Tigers or the Guardians against the Padres or the Dodgers, right? Well, it could be the Dodgers. It can't, it can't be. It can't be. I mean, it's just like you're telling a story here. Yeah. Okay. You're telling a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love when you tell stories. Okay. I don't like when you tell stories. I know you don't. Yeah. Because you always tell Eddie to use the drop. No, I didn't. You know what? I didn't <clears throat> that one time when Eddie slammed you with that drop at your <clears throat> golf tournament that you won. I I didn't tell him that one. That was that was all him. That was all him. That was all him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That okay. was all him. You know, you are. I know you're wearing your bar to a barstool sweatshirt. Yeah, but it, it's like an ode to the Bengals. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. This is Tiger Woods. It's a tiger with a golf club. It's yeah, made for the Bengals. Their, their That's love the, for Tiger the Woods. The Bengals have tigers. Okay, so does zoos. So do the Detroit Tigers. Yeah, so you're a poem for the Tigers now? No, that's not what it is at all. Okay. It's Tiger Woods because they love Tiger Woods and they made the sweatshirt for him, put a golf club in his hand. That's great. So what, what would but you... But he's a human being. He's not a tiger. Right. Well, the Bengals are human beings. They're not tigers. Well, the Bengals themselves are, are humans. Are, are tigers. Well, the Bengal tiger is a tiger. That's their mascot. Right. But the players on the team that play football, they're humans. They are. Anything else? Nope. Is this you trying to get me to reference your sweatshirt? No. Oh, okay. The Yankees sweatshirt. Right. I think that's what he was doing. No, I wasn't. I got to talk about your sweatshirt. So you talk about my sweatshirt. No, I just noticed the sweatshirt. Okay. You got the same and, one. You've worn it. I know I do. Yeah. I, and I wore, and you've wore it here. I didn't realize it was for Tiger Woods. I thought, it, you know, I just thought it was a bunch of Tiger swinging golf clubs. Well, what, what kind of sense would that make? I don't know. It was kind of cool. I mean, you got you got an animal swinging a golf club. Yeah, well, but there wasn't a guy named Hippo Smith, like, you know, playing golf. They'd have hippos swinging golf clubs. They had the walrus. How come they don't have the walrus swinging a golf club? Because Tiger's a little more popular. Uh, and the walrus. walrus was pretty popular. I'm not saying the walrus wasn't popular. I'm saying Tiger was more popular. I'm not saying that he's not more popular, but if you said, what kind of sense would that make? I said, well, why not just have a walrus swing a golf club? Maybe they do. Maybe they're thinking about it right now in the lab. You never know. They should. Yeah. I, mean, I say bring back the walrus. 
You know, they they made a T-shirt. I think KFC was behind it. It's like a, a, a Mets T-shirt for 2024. It's got Grimace and OMG and all this stuff on it. And it's really, really well done. And I almost bought it. And then I decided, I was like, nah, I'm not going to get it. Why not? I don't know. It seemed like more for like a 20-year-old Mets fan, not a 42-year-old Mets fan. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then I was like, do I really want to walk around with Grimace on my chest? No, I don't think you so. You don't. I mean, as much no. as Grimace has been a nice little thing for the Mets, you don't really want to walk around with Grimace on your chest. Right. And then, like, years down the road, you're going to be like, w- w- I mean, what? what am I, why do I own this thing? Why? That's what I thought. That was my whole thought process. All right, coming up next, Jerry comes in here, gives you all the Yankee highlights uh, coming up. But first, we are going to tell you how to win these Yankees tickets. Game one of the ALCS. So, you're going to hear a John Sterling drop right now. This is not the time to call. When you hear it later this hour, that is when you call 866-540-WFAN, 866-540-9326, and you have to be caller number seven. So, let's hear the drop that will be the cue to call later this hour. Bulging. Bulging. John Sterling saying, bulging so when you hear bulging later this hour you call 866-540-WFAN that's 866-540-9326 be caller number seven and you win game one tickets monday night of the alcs at yankee stadium all right 